Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Ask Captain Jaster. I'm sitting here in sunny Southern California, landed uh, today, left out of Chicago early this morning. Uh, two lakes here, and now I'm into uh, landed in uh, Orange County and laying over in Anaheim. As a matter of fact, we're close enough to Disney that we can see the haunted hotel. I can see the haunted hotel from uh, my room. Um, so anyway, I uh, got a question from Barry Manaloa. It says, I was hoping you would go into the Boeing issue. Would make for some mighty good YouTube. Well, Barry, uh, a couple of things. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the Boeing 737 MAX. 27 years ago when I started flying in the airline industry, I flew the 737-200. Now the 200 model of the 737 had the more straight engines on them. Uh, they weren't as high bypass, the big fat engines that you see now. It had a lower bypass on it. And so they were really, really loud. And they also had brown dials. Now they're round dial aircraft and there are what we call glass airplanes. Any airplane nowadays is glass, which means we have screens that we use and computerized interfaces with them. Uh, but back in the old days, I flew the 737-200, which was straight up round dial flying. Um, I did that for three years, and at that time, they were having problems with the 737s, with what they call a rudder hardover, which the rudders would, um, which is the back on the vertical tail, would slam to one side. And what that would do is roll the airplane upside down, and they had several crashes for that. Turns out it was a one of the hydraulic actuators that they were farming out to somebody had messed up with a check ball or something like that. And they quickly fixed that and um, then that issue stopped. The 737 is a very, very old aircraft. And there's only one reason that Boeing is making that right now and that's called Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines has only 737s. So they keep a, uh, a pretty much a chokehold on Boeing to keep making them because their business model is no training costs. Because basically, you come into Southwest with a 737 type rating, and you start in the right seat, and when you have the seniority to be a captain, you just move to the left uh, seat. Basically, they don't have to train you on a 737 because you're already trained on it. The three major airlines at, uh, in the United States have multiple types of airplanes, from 737, 757s, 67s, 777s, 787s, uh, Airbuses, 319s, 20s, 21s, uh, 21 Neos. All of these, these airlines have multiple types of aircraft. So anytime you switch from one airplane to another in an airline, you have to retrain. That costs money. Southwest tries to keep their uh, training costs low by keeping the same airplane. Someday they're going to have to have to change. But what they've been doing is they've gone from 737-200s, which I flew, 300s, 500s, 7-8s, nine and now on to the max so seven eight hundred nine hundred and then the max and what they're doing is basically they're putting lipstick on a pig it's an old airframe it's tired and what i mean by that is the old design um it is only like i said to appease um southwest is the reason why boeing is doing that that airframe should have been retired years and years ago if not decades ago they should have retired and stopped making them and you know redesign and make newer equipment like their triple sevens and their 787s now that's a step in the right direction and they should design a new narrow body airplane but once again southwest keeps a chokehold on them and they keep buying them and so they just keep upgrading them and that appeases the faa so that they can still call it a 737 and not change their training cost so as far as the max crashes let me just tell you something about the, uh, the way the press does any type of airline incident or accident. They love it. Plane crashes are just like back in the old days, train crashes. Every, everybody loves that. And they want to find out why. The problem is, is they usually jump the gun. And the media, typically speaking, goes out and finds anybody that's ever seen an airplane and asks them, the expert, on uh, what happened. So... I don't want to jump the gun like the press does. So typically speaking, 
It takes the NTSB and the FAA a year to marry up the voice re cockpit voice recorders, the flight data recorders, put it in a sim, put all the data together with the weather and everything that happened, training, et cetera, et cetera, and figure out what happened to make that airplane crash. That takes all the emotion out of it. Like the press, if a plane crashes, there's too much emotion in it. It takes a while before you can get the emotion out and just look at the facts. So I will not step out right now and say what I think, just because what I think may be wrong. There's tons of water cooler talk about what happened with those two Maxes that crashed. But in the interest of not jumping on the bandwagon, uh, it does appear that Boeing has made a couple of errors there that they're trying to correct. Those airplanes are still grounded as of the 25th, which it is today, the 25th of June. They're still grounded. Uh, the person, I mean, the airline with the most of them, of course, is Southwest Airlines. They, I think they have 34 of them. And uh, the other majors have some of those too, and they're, they're all parked. And until the uh, FAA recertified them, recertifies them, and I do believe ICAO is involved with this too. That's the international FAA is called ICAO, I-C-A-O. I think it's International Civil Aviation Organization. So the international FAA is, I do believe, weighing in on that as well. But don't quote me on that. Now, so that's the 737 story. And now for the airport tip of the day. Tip of the day, tip of the day, tip of the day. Guys, when you're in an airport, please walk on the right. And please, when you walk on the right, don't all five of whoever is with you get in a solid line across there and just mosey. Please be, <laughs> look around you. Have some situational awareness. Walk on the right. And if you're gonna stop, pull off, just like you do a highway. Go to a rest area, go to a gate. But don't just walk line of rest and stop. Walk on the right, keep moving, and everybody's going to be happy. Thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next Ask Captain Jaster.